In ancient times, many places were named after their ancestors or founding patriarchs. Ophir is no different. Did you know the Bible mentions a guy named Ophir in Genesis 10? Oh yeah, and there is only one Ophir. And then it actually leaves nothing to guesswork as it defines where he lived at the time of the Tower of Babel and where he migrated to, especially with his brother Sheba and Havilah. Hint, he never lived near Saudi Arabia, nor Ethiopia, nor India, nor Britain, nor Spain, or any of the other places making false shallow claims. We will deal with them along the way. Welcome to 100 Clues. The Philippines is the ancient land of gold known as Ophir in the Bible and history. No, it's no fable, and this has already been proven in full in the God Cultures Solomon's Gold series. At the request of many viewers, we have pulled out 100 compelling clues, really proofs or evidences from this research in which we will highlight briefs of the most compelling points, and yes, there are over 100. These videos are for those who have not had the time to watch Solomon's Gold series, and they make it easy to share to friends and family, especially skeptics. This brief video cannot replace that 50 video series nor prove the way that it does, and that is not our intention, but this will be very effective nonetheless. So go there for full evidence, but now, part seven of our series, 100 Clues, The Philippines is Ophir, one clue at a time. So we know that Solomon's Navy journeyed to Ophir for gold. It's rather laughable, some attempt to marginalize this journey as one of, well, just around the corner in the Middle East. The Bible does not leave such vagueness on this topic, we'll show you. Let's look at this port on the Red Sea being described on a map. Ezion Gabir is right there on the Red Sea at the southern tip of Israel in Edom. These are well-documented places as is this port. Someone tried to place it at the Suez Canal which is on the other side of the Red Sea, on the other side in Egypt. Uh, no, Solomon did not build a port in Egypt, and he did not need a canal. He wasn't trying to connect the Mediterranean. He already had trade routes well established on the Mediterranean. This was new. He could have just built a port on the Mediterranean or used the ones he already had access to. He hires Hiram, king of Tyre, which is north of Israel. If he was traveling the Mediterranean, he would not have needed this new port. And to say Solomon the wise was, well, you're really saying dumb enough to build a port on the Red Sea in order to travel almost four times the distance as to get to Spain, Britain, or even the Americas not only ignores biblical directions and just simple logic, it would make him not so wise because it increases the trip by four times. You have to go all the way around Africa. Nonsense, that's not scholarship. See, Hiram and his fellow Phoenicians already had trade routes established in these days all over the Mediterranean, including Oops, Spain, duh. Solomon wasn't going to any of those places, nor anywhere that would use the Mediterranean route in order to get to. He was headed into the Indian Sea to go east. Use just a little logic here, scholars. Uh, just, just a little. And the Bible tells us far more than this. When it comes to ancient geography, Bible scholars aren't just very poor at it, especially for this era. In this case, 
They can't even seem to apply biblical rules, nor even be consistent. It's really bad. And we've really reviewed so much of it that's so, so poor. They just stretch and someone else comes in and stretches more and then they try to make it all fit basically whatever they want. And you can kind of do that with the Bible. You can't really because the Bible doesn't work that way. And it's far more detailed than they're giving it credit if you just, you know, read it and apply it and use it to interpret itself because it gives all the markers, especially in this instance. And we'll cover all of them in the coming videos. Look at this map, the most popular online. It seems the salmon pinkish color is supposed to be Ham's territory, except Ham is all the way up in Shem's territory. That's not very bright. Let's just call it what it is. They don't even understand the difference between when people migrated after Babel from all three tribes and then they assume since Nimrod was from Ham, he took control of that area and maintained control, yet Noah divided the earth after Nimrod. Now, he did so at that point, not before. When he did, he gave all of Asia to Shem. There should be no pink in Shem's territory because that's Ham. Ham cannot live in Shem's territory. For a son of Ham to live in Shem's territory would result in a curse, and yes, Canaan did that. But this kind of mixing is biblically illiterate otherwise. Let's take the two Shebas on this map in Saudi Arabia. See them right next to each other? Well, one is from Ham, and one is from Shem. Yet they are confused that they have both of them living together on this map, which is ignorance. Ham and Shem did not live together in the days after Babel. They were not allowed to. They divided the entire earth. They had plenty of land. The whole earth, for that matter. Then, they do the same with Havilah, who also, there's one from Ham and one from Shem, but evidently they're neighbors living in the same town. Because, well... Forget that they had the whole earth to spread out, but no, no, because they both were named Tavilla, they had to live in the same town. Is that logic? No. What's extremely poor is they ignore and wipe out Ophir's two brothers who were part of his narrative, entrenched in it, especially Sheba. See, there's two Shebas. We'll cover that in more detail later. And Havilah. And they assume both must be the ones from Ham. That's not scholarly. And look, they place Ophir in Saudi Arabia, except we'll prove to you he never lived near Saudi Arabia. So, how do they arrive at this conclusion? Wordplay. Wordplay. That is their favorite tactic, really. And frankly, that's a tactic for the lazy. It's fine to take an etymology and then theorize a connection. But then you are obligated, scholar, to further test it, and they do not, especially in this case. No wonder we don't seem to know anything anymore. This paradigm just keeps us all wandering in the dark, and we're looking to them for answers. They don't have them in this instance. See, there is an Ophir in Saudi Arabia. Uh-oh. Well... That does it, right? I mean, that's it. There's an Ophir in Saudi Arabia. Well, no, it's not actually Ophir. The word is Ophira. So that must mean Ophir, right? Because Ophir's in there. It must... Uh, no. Well, Ophir is in the word. But guess what happens when you add the A on the end? Well, you change the definition. So, gee, if one was a scholar, would they then go look at that word and say, it's very close, but maybe I ought to look at what happens when you add the A on the end. Well, here's what happens. For this word is not Ophir, but it means towards Ophir, to Ophir, or Ophir is that way, not here. 
See, Solomon's navy went right by there to the Indian Ocean and began their journey beyond to Ophir. Again, let's not blame scholars for this kind of ignorance. It is ingrained in their paradigm. That is the real problem. And they are not taught how to exit this box of thinking because they are not supposed to, lest they actually find out that the Philippines is the land of Ophir and always has been. At least that's what history says overwhelmingly. And we'll show you, so does the Bible. Let's look at some more maps. These are more Bible maps, supposedly credible ones. In fact, the one in the top left appearing in the back of many Bibles, like the King James Version. Now, these Bibles were not created in 1611 with the King James. They've been added in modern times, and they're based on an interpretation that is, frankly, very ignorant of this topic. It places Ophir in Africa. The bottom left has three Ophirs with question marks. They don't know. It's okay that they don't know. And at least they put question marks. So should all the others because none of them actually know where Ophir is. But we'll show you. Don't worry. In the upper right there are two Ophirs. Well, the Bible only mentions one. Sorry. And he never lived near Saudi Arabia, we'll prove in the next video. And the bottom right, two Shebas, again, living together, because if your name is Sheba, you have to live together with other Shebas, no matter who your ancestors are and what land you were actually given as an inheritance. Uh, no, that's nonsense. And now we have two Havilas doing the same. And there's Ophir in Africa again, in the land of Ham. Again, he's from Shem and cannot live there or he is cursed. So think this through. Was Ophir cursed? No way. He lived in the most abundant land on earth and very blessed, in fact, for thousands of years. They just are not thinking, nor even trying to get this right, frankly. That was one of the first things we noticed right away in our research, is how haphazard these narratives are and read their excuses, and they are absolutely ridiculous. No basis, especially in Scripture. Now, we're going to prove that, not just say it. Don't worry. Finally, the King James Online doesn't actually agree with the map in the back of their own Bible, and it says Ophir is in India. With what basis? We'll show you. None. Sheba is in Africa, they say. There is a Sheba from Ham who lived in Africa. That would be accurate, but that's not the one which the queen of Sheba descended from, the brother of Ophir. And they placed Tarshish in Spain. Now, we already talked about that, but it's based on a fabled place called Tartesis. Never actually proven to even exist, frankly, but... Based solely on the name, they claim that was Tarshish because it starts with a tar. No, come on, that's not logic. It's fine to begin there, but then just test it a little, scholars, just, just a little. We already proved that foolish, but more so. Did you know the king of Spain hired numerous explorers writing in their contracts even that they were to find a western route to the Far East, to Ophir and Tarshish. Duh! They just don't know history and haven't tested the narrative in the least. It fails. The Bible is far better than that, and it deserves far better from those who call themselves scholars, frankly. Ophir is from Joktan, or actually Joktan in Hebrew. Son of Eber, otherwise known as Hebrew. All of his sons are Hebrews. Whose brother was Peleg, the great-grandfather of Abraham the patriarch, or the Hebrew. He wasn't called the Hebrew because he was the origination of the term, but because he was from Eber. Just look at the Hebrew and you'll see that the word Eber and the word Hebrew are the same word, adding a possessive 
uh, letter to the end of it. That's it. So really, it should be Ebers, if Eber is the accurate way to present that. The passage comes right out and tells us where they lived in the days of Babel and where they migrated to after that. And the dwelling was from Misha, which means departure. Ooh, ding, 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 ding. That's in Hebrew. This word, if you were to really put it in English, should be from the point of departure. Oh, that means they went somewhere. Some people miss that. Yes, they left that point. And then look what it says. As thou goest, see, they went to, they migrated to, unto Safar a mount of the east. Now, these are three places that can be and will be in this series found. We already did in Solomon's Gold series. If you want to jump ahead, go ahead. The name Ophir means reducing to ashes, or really a better definition as it derives from the very word for light, as in let there be light. And there is a reason for that. We'll get there. This scripture is brilliant. And a lot of people look at these passages and they say, so-and-so begot, so-and-so begot, so-and-so, and they yawn. And uh, There's so much information in Genesis 10. It is a beautiful thing. And watch where this leads. We will prove in the next video that Misha is Mishad, Iran. And no, that's not a new theory, nor is Ophir being Philippines for that matter. Uh, these things were known even in the days of Josephus, we'll show you, and they were known all the way up until the 1890s when this was veiled as essentially secret knowledge. But no longer. This veil is being lifted today. Right away, you can see Ophir and Sheba headed east to Safar. In Hebrew, that word has multiple meanings. One is towards a numerous population. And where is the most numerous population on all of Earth? Well, about 60% of the entire world population lives in this red circle, basically. Hmm, I think they headed east. No, actually we don't. And then you have, and to the Mount of the East. Again, they were headed east, which both of these references specifically point to. Now, in the next videos, we'll break this down far more specifically. In fact, the king's ships, Solomon's, went to Tarshish, same place as Ophir, we'll show you, with the servants of Hiram. Every three years once came the ships of Tarshish, bringing gold, silver, ivory, and apes, and peacocks. Now, watch as we test every one of these resources, all native to the Philippines. Don't worry, we know many don't know this. So they'll go into comments and say, oh, there were no apes in the Philippines. Yes, there were, and we'll prove it. We'll show you. Go to Solomon's Gold Series if you want to jump ahead and see for yourself. We prove this. With no fit to any other land making a claim in fact, Tarshish is a place we showed you before. It's the land of silver, where Ophir is the land of gold, and they are next to each other in the same region mapped by the Greeks. Now, someone criticized that map as if we were saying the map was from 800 BC. We never said that. We write on the map, it's 43 AD from Pomponius Mila. We write it's a reconstruction of that map of the original, not even the original, yet it is a map of the Greek route to Ophir, to Christ. And that's what it is. So it's incredible how some of these things get taken out of context and then, oh, they proved us wrong. No, they can't even read a map, unfortunately. This defines a three-year round-trip journey, in fact, which we will fully vet, but it proves out, demonstrating that Solomon's navy went much further than Ethiopia or Yemen 
especially, and even beyond India. Some will attempt to debate this point, but again, this proves out and we obliterate it. And it is a three-year round-trip journey, you'll see. In fact, to say otherwise is really to call Solomon the wise, well, lazy. These next few videos will all tie together, breaking down this scripture. And when you see where it leads, it will surprise many, because all of a sudden, the floodgates are about to open. Someone said on the last one that proving no fear was real doesn't prove it's the Philippines. Well, duh, that's a valid point. However, we need to lay this foundation throughout the series from time to time. Does this passage prove that Ophir is the Philippines? Not yet, but it actually does. We just haven't shown you how yet. It takes multiple videos to do that when you're doing 15-minute segments. As we keep saying, there really is no debating the Philippines is the land of gold in all of history. After just seven short videos, there really is no doubting that the Philippines is the ancient land of gold, Ophir. And no one else qualifies, nor does anyone have this history, and we have hardly even covered anything yet. We're just warming up. It is time. This knowledge be restored. For those about to comment in ignorance, yep, we always get them. We have so far all six videos. We dare you. Watch Solomon's Gold series by The God Culture, the original channel, to prove the Philippines is in fact Ophir. Even here, we are breaking these into sound bites and clear points. But watch how all 100 clues tie together in history, the Bible, science, geography, language, etc. See, that's what researchers do. You pull it all together, and what does the picture reveal? Very obvious. The Philippines is Ophir, and this series will blow your mind. Thank you for watching 100 Clues. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the bell. If you wish to skip ahead, go to The God Culture YouTube channel and watch their Solomon's Gold series in English or Tagalog. There will be a link on the next screen. We can know this truth and be confident this belongs to the Philippines, and no one can disprove it. Until next time.